And the final presentation is in this session is a late-breaking clinical trial entitled Differences in Outcome in Females Undergoing Transcatheter Aortic Valve Replacement Compared to Surgical Aortic Valve Replacement in the Partner Trial. Uh, uh, this will be presented by Dr. Williams on behalf of his colleagues from Columbia, Emory, University of Pennsylvania, Cleveland Clinic, and Medical City, Dallas. Dr. Williams. Thanks. I thought I was on at five, so sorry. Um, well, it's uh, my pleasure to uh, uh, present our paper from the partner trial that discusses uh, the differences in outcomes in uh, females who are uh, undergoing transcatheter valve versus surgical valve replacement. These are my disclosures. <clears throat> By way of background, the partner 1A trial demonstrated uh, equivalency, at least in terms of mortality, between transcatheter valve replacement and surgical valve replacement in high-risk patients. Uh, there were some suggestions in this trial, as well as other trials, that perhaps women may do better with TAVR uh, compared to men. We do know that female gender is a risk factor uh, for patients undergoing surgical valve replacement, but it's less clear if this is also a risk factor for TAVR. We therefore sought to identify any differences and understand a, uh, differences in baseline outcomes in, in women who were randomized in the partner trial undergoing transcatheter valve versus surgical valve replacement. Uh, this is just a slide from uh, Dr. Smith's original presentation of this uh, data at ACC in 2011. And in a subgroup analysis, you can see that there was a suggestion that uh, female patients may uh, do better with TAVR as opposed to surgery. Uh, for the purposes of uh, what I'm discussing here, we're focusing on the high-risk patients and, and and uh, again, very quickly, it was uh, uh, patients, if they were found to be high risk but certainly operable, their access was evaluated if they had appropriate iliofemoral access vessels. They were placed in the transfemoral arm, and if they did not have access, they were placed in the transapical arm. And then the patient subsequently underwent a one-to-one -one randomization of TAVR versus surgery. Um, <clears throat> the focus here is only in the patients that, uh, uh, the female patients, of which there were 300 pa patients. Uh, and we looked at a baseline uh, clinical echocardiographic uh, uh, parameters as well as uh, out, out these outcomes out to two years. Um, while the study was not originally designed to show a difference between the different approaches, we, we uh, have also looked at the, the difference in outcomes between the patients in the transapical and transfemoral arms. <clears throat> Excuse me. At uh, baseline, you'll see that the patients were uh, remarkably similar in terms of age, STS score, uh, Euroscore, incidence of uh, uh, cardiovascular disease, um, similar number of diabetics, COPD, really no, no baseline significant clinical parameters. Uh, in terms of baseline echocardiographic parameters, uh, there was a difference between valve area uh, with it uh, tending to be higher in the patient's uh, um, <laughs> Uh, assigned to surgery, though, you, as you can see with the numbers, they don't appear to be numbers that would be uh, clinically uh, significant. Um, uh, of the, in terms of valve sizing, 78% uh, under uh, patients received the smaller 23 millimeter valve, uh, and 22% uh, received the 26 valve. Obviously, this is for the patients who were treated with TAVR. In terms of outcomes, there was a, uh, at th in terms of short-term procedural-based outcomes, there was a uh, a uh, difference, though not statistically significant, between uh, patients undergoing surgery and uh, TAVR. Uh, there was, however, a, a higher stroke rate in the patients uh, who were treated with a TAVR. There was uh, more complications, uh, vascular complications in patients treated with a TAVR, uh, but there was more major bleeding in those patients treated with a surgical approach. Uh, in terms of uh, discharge echo, um, the main difference is there was a, a higher, but again, probably not clinically significant a difference in valve areas with the valve areas tending to be larger in the patients uh, treated with a transcatheter as opposed to a surgical approach. Uh, you see the gradients are similar. Um, the majority of surgical patients had really no uh, perivalvular leak present, um, as opposed to the transcatheter patients, which had uh, the overwhelming majority had trace or mild uh, perivalvular leak. Uh, fortunately, very few patients had moderate or severe. 
Uh, in terms of mortality, I already showed you the short-term mortality. Out to two years, there was a, a statistically significant and actually a 10% difference uh, with the advantage uh, being in patients who underwent a transcatheter approach uh, as opposed to surgical approach. If we look specifically at uh, the patients who are in the transfemoral arm, notice that this difference is even more exaggerated with an over 13% uh, improvement in survival uh, in patients undergoing a transcatheter approach as opposed to surgery. And interestingly, uh, if we look at the transapical patients, there was actually no difference uh, uh, in survival uh, if you uh, are assigned to this arm between surgery and a transcatheter approach. We did do a multivariate analysis, uh, and uh, treatment arm, uh, interestingly, did not come out as a predictor, uh, with the three major predictors for um, uh, late mortality in women being uh, major bleeding, uh, COPD, and an elevated STS risk score. Uh, if we, this uh, shows the, the the gradients in valve area um, out to two years. And it's important to note uh, a couple things, certainly that in both arms, the patients maintained a good valve area. Um, again, in general, the, the valve area was better with the transcatheter patients, but it's not one that appears clinically significant and importantly probably uh, does not uh, you would show that, that your patient prosthesis mismatch was, it was not likely to be the driver for the mortality difference in these patients. Uh, we did look at a comparison of uh, the different approaches. So these are the patients um, uh, having a, tra the, uh, obviously the females who had, uh, uh, who were assigned to randomized to TAVR, comparing the transfemoral versus the transapical approach. And you can see that there was a, you know, pretty marked difference with the survival being better in those patients that had a, a transfemoral approach as opposed to transapical approach. Now, one of the, the points with you know, these differences has certainly been shown before, and one of the arguments, not unreasonable, is that perhaps it, the transapical represents a sicker population. But interestingly, if we looked at the uh, outcomes of those patients having surgery, whether or not they were in the transfemoral or transapical arm, there was actually not a difference in survival uh, in terms of their, their surgical outcomes. Uh, stroke is obviously one of the big issues, and as I showed you before, there was a much higher um, uh, stroke rate. Uh, this is maintained. The curves tend to parallel themselves, but still there was a significantly higher incidence of stroke in, in uh, the patients who had a transcatheter approach uh, as opposed to surgery. Uh, interestingly, this seems to be much uh, driven predominantly by the, uh, the transfemoral patients. So this shows the incidence. Sorry, I don't know how to... This shows the incidence of uh, stroke, uh, transfemoral versus transapical, and there was a, tended to be a slightly higher incidence uh, in the transfemoral arm as opposed to the transapical, but interestingly, there were no uh, female patients who had a stroke that, were, uh, that underwent a surgical aortic valve replacement. In concluding, uh, conclusion, women have a survival benefit uh, at least up to two years when they are uh, treated uh, uh, with a transcatheter approach um, versus a, a surgical approach. Um, female sex, while it may be a risk factor for surgical valve replacement, it does not appear to be a risk factor for transcatheter valve replacement. Uh, women did experience uh, more bleeding with surgery, but more vascular complications with TAVR, and they also had a significantly high st higher stroke rate if uh, undergoing TAVR as opposed to surgery. And again, this appeared to be driven more by the uh, higher stroke rate in the transfemoral arm. Um, I think based on this, it would suggest that uh, transcatheter valve uh, replacement may be a better option in uh, women than surgical uh, valve replacement, assuming again this is, we're talking about a high risk population, uh, certainly not all comers. You know, we need to certainly understand a lot more, you know, why, why do women, for example, have a lower mortality despite a higher incidence of vascular complications and stroke, which are generally complications that do drive mortality. You need to understand why there's a higher stroke rate, why there's a difference between transfemoral and transapical approach. Uh, with that, I'll conclude and want to thank the uh, uh, patients and the investigators in the partner trial. Thank you. Uh, this paper is open for the discussion. Is anybody from the thoughts? Yeah, Beth, uh, excellent presentation and very intriguing data. Um, actually, as you also mentioned in your conclusion slide, it's strange that in the transfemoral there's a major advantage uh, for, for transcatheter heart valves compared to surgery, while in transapical it's not. 
while the patients in the transitical group have more comorbidities. Sure. So you would actually expect, you know, that there the difference would be, you know, in, in favor of, of transcatheter heart valve. So is, is transapical approach then so bad? Or should we, w would you think that, that the results may, maybe might be better with direct aortic access or with subclavian access? Um, that's my personal feeling. I mean, I don't think we have any data to demonstrate that at this point. And, um, you know, we should hopefully get some of that at least, uh, you know, sooner with the, the, the core valve uh, trials as those come out because, you know, we've only started doing it with recently with the uh, uh, Sapien system. But, uh, you know, I personally think that it is a better tolerated procedure. Um, you know, it's interesting that even in men, the, there wasn't, the, we didn't see these differences in men, but at baseline, the men had much, high, many more comorbidities than women, and part of it is because, you know, it was driven by the STS score and female uh, gender um, counts on that algorithm, and so, you know, the men needed to have the diabetes and other things mm -hmm. in order to get their score high enough. Right, okay. Claudio uh, Monoretto. Claudio Monoretto from Italy. Congratulations for the, ex okay. the excellent study. Uh, many previous studies look at uh, uh, female sex as a risk factor for aortic valve replacement, and very few of them were able to demonstrate that, that this is an independent risk factor for surgery. In addition to that, uh, most of study found that uh, body size is an independent risk factor, and obviously most of your women may have a very low body size. So did you look at that, and did you try to discriminate in between uh, this general women population if only few patients with a very small body size may be affected mm -hmm. from? Yeah, I mean, in, you know, in terms of the baseline, the, the BSA was actually identical at 1.69 between both groups. Um, I think it does, um, you know, the, the next step on the body size would be, you know, are these patients more likely going to have patient prosthesis mismatch? And that's something that we're currently looking, you know, try, there's actually part of the publications committee as a group looking at patient prosthesis mismatch, and they're, they're, they're uh, getting close to finalizing, and obviously within that we'll look at... Uh, you know, the differences in, in, uh, in the women specifically. You know, it, it, it just their baseline echo, the annulus, the average annulus was about 18, 19. So they did tend to, to be smaller valves. And most of the, I didn't show the breakdown, but certainly most of them uh, in terms of surgical valves got 19s and 21s. Parker for number three. Matt, a similar uh, Can you question. Can your name? Oh, sorry. Dennis Nichols from Tacoma. A similar type of question. In, did you look at patients kind of in the extremes of BMI? You, know, you see these women who are small women in big bodies with a BMI over 45, and was there a difference in outcomes with the surgical arm versus the, the catheter-delivered valve? And I'm kind of wondering what your experience is like with small annulus of, as you said, 18 to 19 millimeters, and how much improvement are we making upon those patients? by doing a surgical valve implantation on them with a 90 millimeter valve or something like that in terms of their symptoms and wondered what, what your thoughts were with regard to that in terms of both the surgical arm and the, the, the uh, uh, catheter deliver arms. Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. And again, the general trend was that there wasn't a difference, but I do think we need to look at some specific patients on the extreme, and obviously we'll, we'll show this more in the, 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 uh, the PPM study. Um, you know, the, in general, we know, we've seen with other studies, that, that the transcatheter valves kind of behave a little more like a, a stentless surgical valve uh, in terms of their hemodynamic performance than the, the obviously, the stented surgical valve. So it, it would make sense there would be a difference, but, you know, it's, it's not yet supported in the data we have. So, so Matt, there was also a major uh, difference in stroke between the surgical arm and the transcatheter arm. Uh, 6.8, if I was correct. Yeah, there was a, definitely a major difference. In fact, so it's, it's, and in men, there really isn't, but yeah. But it in, seems to be larger than in other cohorts. Yeah, yeah. Do we have an ex any explanation? Are That's, these? you know, we don't. I mean, you know, it's, you know, questions, some, are some of them more vascular paths? But again, that's not supported in the data. So it's, yeah. it, that's something we really need to understand better. So, so in the future, you know, hopefully we'll get a score um, uh, that they can differentiate which patients need can need surgery or can better have surgery, yeah. and which ones uh, need better have transcatheter heart valves. And, and I know that's something you're working on, but we yeah, need a we need a TAVR score. That's yeah. you know the STS is a good guideline for understanding you know what their outcomes with surgery may be, but it's probably not an ideal predictor for what their yeah. outcomes with transcatheter yeah. valve will be. And gender might be an yeah. important factor. Yeah, please. Glenn Whitman again from Johns Hopkins. 
Dr. Williams, everybody's fascinated with what's going on with the trans with the, the, the TAVR studies. Um, there are two issues that